We've got the new 2021 Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X here for testing. You're gonna get Thomas's feedback and tell you which is right for your game. Hey golfers, can you notice the difference in the sound between those two golf balls? Feel with the 2021 Pro V1X and Pro V1 golf ball is quite different and we are going to educate you on the differences today through TrackMan testing. Thomas, I know that's one of your favorite tests to use to identify the sound and feel of a golf ball. Um, quick, what did you uh, identify there with that quick test there? Yeah, the Pro V1 felt quite soft as I'm bouncing this on that club face. Well, the probably one X felt a little bit firmer. Okay, well, let's see what the trackman numbers tell us then too, huh? Let's go hit some shots. All right, Thomas, you tell me all the time how big and important ball fitting is. And so we've got two of the most important uh, golf ball models with us today. Um, based on what we know about Pro V1 and Pro V1X, what do you think in terms of the characteristics of short game all the way up to long game shots? We're gonna see the differences here. What are they gonna be? Yeah, Titleist still has the main market when it comes to golf balls. It's shrinking a little bit, but they're still killing it with mm -hmm. regards to golf balls. And they create such a good golf ball, premium golf ball, and there are some major differences between them too. So first thing I want to touch on, spin. So spin is very important when you're fitting a player for mm -hmm. their irons or for their driver. So the Pro V1 and Pro V1X, as we're testing today, there will be some differences in spin when I'm hitting a wedge shot when I'm hitting a 7 iron and when I'm hitting a driver. Mm -hmm. uh, height is also important as well. The Pro V1X is designed to fly a little bit higher and spin a little bit more than the Pro V1 is. So it's important to work with your club fitter to figure out what type of golf ball that you should fit into based on your flight characteristics. Mm -hmm. And I know I've been one of those players out there and I know there are many of them that you, know, you see golf balls and you hit them and you don't maybe see you know, the, the drastic differences, but if you do see them when you get on track, man, you look at those spin numbers, you look at that height, you look at things like that, and you can really see why it's a big deal and why playing A, the same golf ball every time, but B, one that's fit for you is important. And so we're gonna show that today here. Yeah, the golf balls, they're designed differently. So the cores are designed differently. So the layers, so some layers with the Pro V1 and Pro V1X are layered on a soft layer to a hard layer or a hard layer to a soft layer. And what that does is that really influences the amount of spin that you generate off the golf ball. Mm -hmm. Well, Thomas, uh, we've got a few different clubs here to hit, it looks like. So how is this test going to work out, and um, what's the format here we're looking at? Yeah, so I want to test wedge spin. So I'll test kind of almost a full swing with my 56-degree wedge. Talk about wedge, stopping power, and feel off the club face. That's probably where we're going to notice most of the soft feeling or firmer feeling off the face. We also want to hit some full seven irons. I also want to hit some bombs as well, so I want to hit some drives. Yeah. So it's always fun to see which golf ball was the hottest, fastest golf ball out there too. Perfect, yeah. Well, we'll get the numbers and then we'll really break it down and we'll identify those differences. Well, let's start off with the wedges. All right. We're stopping on a dime right there. The carry to total distance is the same pretty much. That golf ball really felt firmer than mm -hmm. the Pro V1. Yeah, the spin jumped up too there. Interesting. Yeah, the Pro V1X is going to be a little firmer feeling than the Pro V1 is going to mm -hmm. be. Spin consistency right around about 10,000. Yeah, we definitely see a little bit of a difference there, Thomas. Um, we can start. Just bring up these numbers really quick, and then we'll maybe talk about some more of the, the tech within. But uh, you're, you're seeing right away the difference between Pro V1 and Pro V1X. You've got over, just a little over 10,000 spin RPMs with the Pro V1X, and then Pro V1 is around 9750. So um, you're seeing a little bit of a difference now. Golfers might not, you know, might look at that and say, well, what's, you know, is that a huge difference? But you can see, it, we'll see in terms of landing power, stopping, spinning the ball back, it does make a big difference. Yeah, it's important to note, I'm hitting my 1030 wedge swing right now, mm -hmm. so I'm not quite full swing. When I'm hitting a wedge shot, I don't want to spin it backwards too much. I want it to kind of land and stop and stop right on a dime. 
I don't want to rip it back mm -hmm. 10 yards. I don't want to release out 10 yards. So important to get the right golf ball to kind of fit based on what try you're trying to do with your golf shot as well there too. So you can take a look at the numbers and see the differences between my carry and total distance. Notice they're within one yard. So the important piece here is I'm going to give you stopping power. Probably one X just is going to stop a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit faster and that can be the difference in something that, you know, if you land it right by the pin and it zips back, you, you're going to have maybe eight to 10 feet for your birdie rather than you know, something with a little bit less spin, you might be tapping in for your birdie, things like that. But we see the big spin numbers and there's definitely some control to be had with these golf balls. Um, Titleist, you know, they're always, for as great as our golf balls are, the way they push the envelope is just as good, right? And so we've got a new dimple pattern with the Pro V1 and Pro V1X this year. Spherically tiled tetrahedral dimple pattern. There's gonna be a quiz on this, Thomas. <laughs> Uh, but 388 dimples with the Pro V1 and 348 with the Pro V1X. So basically that's a lot of scientific, scientific <laughs> terms to illustrate that there's going to be differences. There's you know, maybe a little bit higher flight, firmer feel with the Pro V1X, vice versa with the Pro V1. I'm glad you got to say that terminology <laughs> and not me because I don't think I could have wrapped my tongue around that. But yeah, so there's definitely differences in design. You talk about dimples. So there is 40 more dimples on the Pro V1 mm -hmm. than the Pro V1X. A lot of that comes down to lift and drag. So the golf ball with the Pro V1X is designed to fly in a more optimal kind of window, a little bit higher. So less dimples on the ball is gonna enable that ball to fly a little bit higher and spin a little bit more. More dimples on the ball. So you mentioned 388 mm -hmm. on the Pro V1 golf ball is gonna have it fly just a little bit lower in a more optimal window there too. So a lot of it's just to do with lift and drag the way the ball is designed mm -hmm. and how it goes through the year. Yeah, and I know these Titleist engineers and their R&D, they go through all kinds of testing to develop you know, all kinds of different dimple patterns. I know that they've been working on this one in particular for a long time, uh, you know, perhaps almost up, a, up to a decade, trying to put together the right formula, and I think they found it here. And so with that said, um, we can move along to the seven iron, and we can really see how maybe full shots are impacted with the different balls here. Yeah, let's do it. What I just want to touch on, they've been, what you mentioned, they've been working a long time. I think it's been 11 years. Mm -hmm. And when they're testing golf balls every year, it's not just one dimple pattern. They're testing maybe 60 mm -hmm. to 80 different dimple patterns on the golf ball to make it work. There's a reason why Tide this is number one ball in the world, because they really find a way to make it work. Yeah, yeah, they're, again, they, those guys, I mean, <laughs> you don't get the best golf ball in terms of most popularity, but most popular on tour, and same for amateurs without some extensive research and testing and prototype, things like that. So uh, I'm excited to see the full shots now because we've got, we've got the short game control and everybody loves spin on short game, right? But then you get to the long game and then you kind of don't want spin anymore. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the differences. All right, Thomas, that was 10 shots with the seven iron, uh, five with the Pro V1, five with the Pro V1X. Yep. Um, we did see significant difference uh, in spin. Um, and that was, you know, roughly what, 500 RPM almost in, in spin difference. So now please, you know, let, let's talk about the, actually what we'll see on the golf course then, right? Cause we're in a fitting bay, we won't be able to see the effect of that. But what is the effect of 500 RPM with your seven iron? Well, that's really important because if you have a player that struggles with spin with a 7-iron and, and height with a 7-iron, it's going to lift them up a little bit and give them a little bit better stopping power. So mm -hmm. stopping power on the golf course is going to be the important piece. So if you're going to look at the difference between the carry and total distance on both those shots, I'm willing to bet that with the Pro V1X, the golf will stop faster mm -hmm. compared to the Pro V1. I don't know what the numbers are yet, but I'm mean, willing to bet there's going to be a difference. Yeah. So you can see... Yeah, so five versus seven. So not a major difference, but two yards is two yards. Yeah. It's definitely gonna give you better, um, better stopping power with the Pro V1X. I'm curious in the height. So yeah, it was about 10 feet higher. So that's kind of interesting that the mm -hmm. ball was flying. I think I had one miss it in there with the Pro V1. Okay. If you're gonna look at that one and maybe take that one out. It was one that was a little bit low left. If you look at the height. That was this one here. Yeah, it was that one there. Um, if you're going to maybe look at the averages now and compare them, 
I'm going to guess it's going to be a little bit close, but I'm going to guess it's still going to spin less with the Proby ones to yep. a little lower. Yep. And yep. so I think the one thing to note is a lot of golfers, maybe they have a low ball flight already, and they just kind of think, well, Proby one, I'm going to grab that and play it. Proby one X is probably the better fit for someone that has a naturally low launch and low ball flight, and then vice versa for somebody that launches it naturally high with high spin. Better ball's probably the Pro V1 yep. between the two. Yeah, I mean for your faster swing players, usually club, usually your usually your ball speed number is going to be close to kind of club times it by a thousand, mm -hmm. and you know maybe a little bit less because okay. lofts are not as weak as they maybe used to be. Um, but you've noticed a lot of people have seen a lot of films me video right now, and you notice that my spin rate's always been kind of the the mid to high five thousands or the seven iron. That's what I saw with the Pro V1. We throw probably one X in the in the mix. I was able to get 500 RPMs more spin, mm -hmm. which is going to give me better stopping power. Yep. So it, it makes a huge difference. 500 RPMs is a big big difference. Mm -hmm. It's going to influence the distance. So it's going to influence the stopping power as well. Yeah. And we talk about spin a lot with drivers too. Um, you know, there's an optimal window that I know for you know the players that swing about your speed. It's kind of in that 2000s range, right? But with the driver, like a 500 RPM with the driver is a huge difference too. So we're going to test out here and see the perspective there as well. Sounds good. Well, this is some drives. That there, was a low flight. That That's was a good swing. All right, well, Thomas, that was 10 shots with the driver, uh, five with each model of golf ball. Um, we can take a look at these numbers here. Um, I know there was a couple maybe that you thought maybe were, I guess, outliers, and uh, maybe you could take out for data purposes here. Yeah, there was definitely two. If you look at shot 30, my ball speed dropped significantly on that one. I got it a little higher in the face. And then I think it was around about shot Shot 21, so it was the first shot that I hit with the Pro V1 golf ball. Okay, yeah, yeah. Those two, you notice the ball speeds kind of significantly dropped on those. Okay. Not going to hit perfect every time, but it's definitely going to influence the spin if you're catching it high on the face or low on the face there, okay. too. So keep in mind, as we're trying to explain the differences in numbers, a lot of this will depend on where a player hits it on the yeah. golf face, too. So it's going to be uh, numbers to talk about and focus on, but keep in mind it's always going to be player dependent because if you have a different attack angle, if you have a different hit location, mm -hmm. different loft on your right. driver, it's always going to be so subjective when it comes yes. to spin with regards to comparing these two models. It's about your tendency, right? Your tendency. If you tend to launch the ball really high in the air um, or spin the ball a lot, then Pro V1 uh, is probably the ball for you and vice versa. So yep. looking at these numbers here, um, we're seeing a difference in things like launch angle, a little bit of a difference in spin, um, and then we'll go over to height here. I would imagine there'll be a little bit of a difference there. So you're saying, wow, yeah, 20 some feet of difference in height. So definitely a difference in terms of how the ball flies through the air and gets to the, uh, I guess, the target. Because ultimately, distance wise, what do we see here? You know, a yard, half of a yard of total distance, but you're seeing the manner in which the ball got there was very different. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh these are the trends that Titleist would say would happen. Pro V1 X is designed to spin a little bit more mm -hmm. and fly a little bit higher. Pro V1 is supposed to fly a little bit lower and spin a little bit less. Mm -hmm. We did see that. We're not saying, seeing so much of a big difference with the, with the driver on the spin numbers, but the difference is, yes, the ball definitely flew a lot higher with the Pro V1 X. And we saw that across the board with the, the seven iron as yeah. well. It flew a little bit higher as well, and it spun a little bit more, and it was significantly different with the, with the, with the iron. The driver, as you mentioned, I mean, I picked up five yards of carry distance with the Pro V1X yeah. versus the Pro V1. I think my club speed was probably pretty similar. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we're talking within half a mile of each, of each one there, too. So it's, yeah, they're, they're both hot. The ball speed was good. Smash factor efficiency, 1.5. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah, there's a big difference in the feel, though. For sure, that Pro V1X feels mm -hmm. a lot firmer than the Pro V1 yeah. does. Yeah, we didn't touch much on the actual explosiveness of the ball speed and stuff, but that's also there too with these golf balls. So a uh, little breakdown there in terms of the difference between Pro V1 and Pro V1X. Um, of course, at Second Swing, we offer 
ball fittings in addition to the club fittings. So that's, that's a key thing to remember for golfers that are interested in, you know, we'll be playing Pro V1 and Pro V1X this year. Make sure to stop into a Second Swing store available now. Are also, you can shop at secondswing.com for Pro V1 and Pro V1X golf balls. Make sure you know which ones are the right ones for your game, and that way you can play better golf and lower your scores. So, Thomas, thank you for the information today, breaking everything down, hitting all the golf shots. Yeah, don't just play any old golf ball. Make sure you get fit for the right ball.